Hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, I am, uh, I got a few things going on. Uh, yesterday I was here for, uh, for a little while and all I got, um, I just machined some standoffs for, for the, uh, engine mount. And, uh, we have a, uh, we have a, a, a lathe back there. So, um, I was able to just size these up and and just make them out of some inch and a quarter uh, aluminum bar stock, and I'll show you what these are doing. Um, since I'm a, a bed mount here, we've got some uh, parts of the bottom of the case that have to clear. They have to clear the. Uh, they have to sit above the uh, bed mount a little bit. So, so what I've got is uh, I've got the uh, berry mount that goes in here, and then obviously there's a washer on top of the berry mount. And then what happens is my standoff then comes in here and sits like that. And then what that does is it gives me about a 3 16 inch clearance to the uh, the bottom part of the case right here. So I got those four, I got those four made. Um, and so I'll be able to get the engine in here and get it positioned properly. It offsets um, an eighth of an inch. And uh, I'll get that all worked out and I'll get the holes drilled, uh, located for the uh, 3 8 um, bolts that are uh, AN6-50 more than 10 bucks a piece <laughs> I was a little bit shocked when I looked that up but uh, you know it is what it is so uh, and once I get the holes drilled then I'll, I'll put some holes in here to get a ratchet in there uh, I'm gonna try and size these where I can put a rubber they kind of make these rubber grommets that are that are kind of like um, uh, and block offs. Uh, so I'm going to try and size these so that I can block them off. But we'll see if I can find something that will uh, work for that. And yesterday, as well, I got the uh, uh, I got the rudder finished up. Got the covering on that. The weaves all sealed up and sealed up. <laughs> I don't know why I have such a problem with that word. And then um, these are ready to paint. And so today I'm going to get the uh, elevator covered and then I'm going to get a, I'm an epoxy. Um, here's my antenna and I'm using a, uh, as I mentioned before, advanced aircraft electronics uh, antenna and I'll show you the, uh, it's the VHF 5T. The thing that I like so much about this particular antenna is it just it doesn't require uh, it doesn't require a ground plane, so um, it's kind of made for composite and fabric covered airplanes. And I am putting it. Um, I've chosen to put it in the wing. So what I have here is a piece of 16th inch ply. Uh, it's about 46 inches long, and I'll show you. That's just going to extend in my right wing. Uh, is where I'm going to put it and it just attaches to um, this vertical right here and then it'll kind of stretch across um, to this one out here and so that'll just get epoxied in those four locations and the antenna itself um, comes prepared to uh, to be epoxied uh, into the airframe as well so I'll just hit that with a light piece of sandpaper and epoxy that to the plywood and once that's uh, in place then I'll get it to <clears throat> I'll get uh, once I get this epoxy to this then I'll be able to epoxy the whole assembly into the wing when I get the wing up here which which I'm gonna try and do uh, after I get this elevator covered I'm gonna get the wing the uh, first wing in position so we can start sealing it up and uh, and getting that covered um, this, uh, this antenna in the configuration I'm using it, um, 
it's you know it's in kind of in the plane of the prop um, I'm gonna get the best transmission and reception in front of me and behind me um, and it'll be a little weaker off the wingtips so um, you could have mounted it in various configurations if you went the other way you would get the strongest signal um, off the wingtips left and right and you get the weakest signal in front of you and behind you so I'm choosing to get the strongest signal in front of me and behind me because when you're <clears throat> in the pattern or close to the airport you're kind of on top of the airport anyway so um, so if you're I'm not as concerned about um, about that so uh, yeah here's uh, here's hoping that it's a great solution and uh, the antenna itself gets some really strong recommendations so um, yeah the only thing that's important about it um, is that it you don't mount it in this horizontal position like this unless you're using it for uh, navigation um, then you would mount it like this but for communication it has to be mounted in a vertical format like this so the uh, the wing is a perfect spot for it it's completely hidden straight cable just with the 90 degree connections coming right out that uh, out that right that right wing um, right into the fuselage up here somewhere and then just right over to the radio so it'll be a real clean um, installation so anyway enough about that I'm gonna get that epoxied in place but right now I'm gonna kind of get things reorganized so that I can get the uh, uh, get the elevator ready to cover all right <laughs> all right so while I'm waiting for the uh, uh, compressor to kick up so I can dust off the uh, elevator um, I'm getting the uh, getting the rubber rubber mounts for the instrument panel in place here, and then I've got to do some label wiring so I know what's what before I uh, pull that pull that out of there. And I probably need to drill these out since they more than likely have some. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hit those with a drill real quick because they've got some uh, urethane in them. So, one second. All right, so we'll get these guys uh, down in there now. Still kind of, kind of screw in that hole. Could have been just slightly larger, but this works out fine. So. some uh, lock nuts uh, for the inside of the instrument panel. I'm just going to set these down in the seat here. All right, so I just got it uh, sitting there for now. Uh, I'm not going to go any further um, because I have to take this. I got to take this switch out. I got to take this out in order to access these forward uh, these forward holes. So um, I'm going to leave that for now, and I'm going to stick to the main thing, which is getting this covering done. <laughs> like I said before, it's easy to get distracted with all the details when uh, the most important thing right now is getting urethane on those and getting the rest of the plane covered so um, and especially the tail because I've got to get uh, uh, I got to get that vertical stab mounted to the horizontal stab so that I can get them mounted to the fuselage so that I can put the engine on um, so that's kind of the sequence that we're dealing with but at the same time I need to get uh, uh, I need to get this elevator covered, so I'm going to jump back to uh, back to that. I'm going to leave that for now, um, and uh, yeah, I'll keep uh, I'll keep pressing on here. All 
All right, so I got the uh, I got the elevator all covered, and uh, when this uh, dries, then we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to iron iron this where it pops up here. I mean, it's just by pressing it down, it probably will stay there forever. But you put the heat on it, and it uh, reattaches right away. Um, so I have that to do, and then we'll be able to fill the weave and. And uh, you know what happens all after that. We fill the weave, we put the finishing tapes on, and then and then we're ready to paint it. So um, I think what I'll do next time is I'm going to get those the uh, vertical uh, stuff painted so that I can go ahead and get that assembled here because I'm ready for it. And uh, what I uh, what I intended to do. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I was going to show you. I figured out my um, my facet pump. What I've done is uh, I got a 45 degree uh, fitting here, and that actually works out really well. Once I come, once I'm down in here, and I come off of the uh, off of my uh, shut off here, it actually is a pretty easy jump down to this to this 45. So I've got that set up now and ready to, I'm gonna attach some wires before I put it in there or I actually my wires are already coming out of there um, they're already here so one of these pair so we'll figure out which ones those are um, it's gonna be number the first one here the one I have to take loose actually is the one so it's this guy That guy there. So we'll figure that out. Um, and uh, I picked up, uh, or my parts came in for the for the plane see what all I've got here I have lots of uh, aircraft spruce bags I've had lots of aircraft spruce bags all right so that is the fuel pressure sender. Um, I'm using uh, Tigon uh, fuel tubing and uh, that's just an extra 45 which I don't uh, hang on to that. Um, this is the fuel temperature, the uh, oil temperature, so that's the oil temperature here and that's the We'll get that put in. We get this that we can put into the engine. And, uh, and then I just picked up a, uh, uh, this was the air breather that uh, uh, Scott recommended that I get. So they're available f for motorcycles. Um, pretty, uh, pretty inexpensive. So 48 millimeter. And then I'm gonna be using uh, uh, these uh, stainless steel Oedeker, um ear clamps on my fuel tubing. So, as a matter of fact, I wanted to test one of those. Uh... All right, so I just want to give this a go. Um, something I haven't haven't done yet, but uh, allegedly, you can get this on there, and then you fit the clamp on there. Then you just grab it with a pair of these, and let me switch to the other side here. And then you just crimp it. Just like that. 
that for sure is going nowhere. Um, and I like these. I like these better. Um, they'll be simple to install and uh, fairly uh, fairly easy to remove. All right, we'll see if we can get on this with a pair of pliers here. Straighten that out. And then we should just be able to pry this up. So when it comes time to replace the fuel line, we'll just be uh, taking that, uh, taking those off and uh, taking the fuel line, fuel line out and redoing all that. So it's, uh, I just wanted to make sure I could do that. So that I knew, knew how to, how to do that. Uh, I'll figure out a, uh, a little better, smaller plier that'll actually make that job easier. Um, but it shouldn't be too bad to, uh, to get to those when necessary. So, um, yeah, so I've got these parts, uh, I'll use my same Loctite 567 to put these guys on the engine. Um, so I've got those that I can work on uh, tomorrow in between waiting for paint to dry and uh, other things. I can do that. And again, the uh, this is the uh, oil pressure. This one goes up here. Oil temperature, of course, goes down there in the back. So I was going to show you. I did get the uh, I did get the gasculator mounted, and uh, it's really cool because it's just really nice and snug in there. And with that grommet um, down underneath, it actually has a little cushioning. Uh, I'll show you the underside. The reason I put this kind of drain valve is, is because this is the where I'm going to. If I have to drain my tanks, this is where I'll do it from. So, um, so that's right there. So it just pushes up, it's a sample, or pushes up and locks in place to drain. So, super convenient. Super convenient. Um, so I'll be able to sample the fuel there, and the, uh, the good thing is the gasculator is definitely the low, the low point in the whole system, so... Uh, any water in the lines are definitely going to go to the gasculator. So, the if I remember right, the fuel tank, the fuel thing comes out of the tank somewhere around here, out of the wing, and it's going to go down, down here, and uh, and then it comes downhill from the carb through the fuel pump. So, all right. Um, that's it for, uh, that's all the time I have today, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't really feel like I got a whole lot, oh, <clears throat> one more thing before I go. <clears throat> I wanted to share, uh, by the way, my antenna is, was, uh, dry enough to take the weights off, so now it's mounted to the, uh, now it's mounted to the plywood, which is awesome. And whenever we get the wing up, we'll be uh, we'll be mounting it to the those uh, along the spar um, in there. So that's cool. And uh, I was going to show you um, some stuff in the manual here. I know, you know, I hadn't I had made the comment before that um, I hadn't seen a operating manual for half EW so I, I, there were a lot of things a lot of questions I had a lot of things I didn't really I didn't really know maybe some of this information you'll find interesting so I thought I would share it with you um, the uh, displacement is 1200 cc's the bore is a uh, 94 millimeter the stroke is 86 compression ratio 7.8 to 1 um, the uh, bearing size the uh, rod the, it's 2.0 standard the main case is a uh, uh, standard case 0.020 uh, 
and then um, fuel requirement uh, 91 octane minimum 10 percent ethanol max and you saw me asked Scott about using 100 low lead, which actually he thinks it's actually a better fuel for the engine anyway. Um, so that was nice to uh, hear. Put a little additive in occasionally to uh, take care of the lead. And uh, got the torque specs for the, uh, for the different parts of the engine. Spark plug. 20 foot-pounds for the large plug, 10 foot-pounds for the smaller one. Um, all the rocker arms, cylinder head nuts. Timing specs, uh, 26 degrees before top center valve clearance point. It's basically five thousandths and seven thousandths on the valve. Clearance kind of talks about the assembly instructions, um, how to put it together, the majority of uh, you know, like I said, my magneto is already timed because it's still exactly how Scott ran it since it didn't have to be boxed up. Um, so that's all good. And then the normal operating limitations, cruise RPM, 28 to 3,200 RPM. Maximum, 3,600. Uh, minimum oil temp, 160. Maximum, 230. Minimum oil pressure at cruise, 23. Maximum oil pressure at cruise, 70. Cylinder head temperature at cruise, 350 to 375, maximum 450. EGT, 1250 degrees at cruise, and uh, 1400 maximum on that. Goes through the uh, scheduled maintenance, uh, when stuff needs to be done, and uh, when you need to valve to adjust the valves, um, this is how it happens, and he said because of the rockers that are in there, um, these valves don't have to be uh, adjusted as much as I had to adjust the valves on my 67 Beetle back in the mid 80s so good good to know um, and then it goes through a uh, starting procedure uh, the uh, starting run-in and proper oil um, all the information about that it goes through how to time the magneto um, which initially I don't have to I don't have to worry about that it's already already been timed and then um, talks about how to adjust the zenith carburetor uh, so that's good and then this talks about the secondary ignition uh, and it you know it tells you here that uh, the two cylinder uses just one coil not two even though this shows you a setup for two so it shows you how to wire the wires that are coming from the uh, electronic ignition to the uh, to the coil and uh, all the information around the, the timing of it there and timing it. and then this is the uh, counterweight um, for the engine balancing that goes on the back side of that uh, prop flange which I showed you on the uh, engine there and it's just opposite the key and um, it's, it's already strapped in place where it goes and so that's that's the manual and uh, yeah um, thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, it's good to get that elevator covered finally and now we can get back to doing some painting and keep uh, keep moving forward to get as soon as I get the elevator ready to uh, paint I'm gonna get a wing over here and we'll get started on getting one of those uh, sealed up. I think we'll start with the right wing. Um, get that one first and uh, go from there. So hey I will uh, hope you're all doing well, and uh, if you're not a subscriber, I, I do invite you to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you get notified every time I upload one of these videos. And uh, hey, I'll catch you later.